What's going on, sports card hobby family? It is football Sunday. I'm going to do my own version of a weekly hobby news, random hobby thoughts thingy my bobber today. Before I get started, huge thanks to today's video sponsor, ComC.com. They sent me a care package. I pulled out a few of the items. They sent me some Tom Brady stuff. They sent me some Drew Brees stuff. Very, very cool. Some game used stuff going back. And also... Can't forget the Stranger Things cards. They sent me a couple of awesome Stranger Things cards. Big thanks to the ComC team. ComC.com quickly becoming more and more a hobby company juggernaut. So make sure to check them out. I've got links in the video description as well as in the pinned comments to take you there. All right, a couple of stories caught my eye today. Sports Collectors Daily had posted about a 16-year-old basketball star, Darren Peterson, who was recently signed by, guess who, Fanatics Trading Cards. He actually moved from Ohio to West Virginia because West Virginia is one of 31 or 32 states that allows nil deals for high school players. And so nil deals, not only just for college, but now we're talking high school where basketball players, football players, this guy moved to actually get a nil deal. And can you really blame these guys? I certainly can't. This is life-changing type money. We're going to dive into another example here in a second, but this is interesting to me because Fanatics coming in really early now. There's now, of course, they've been making waves about how they're signing a lot of exclusive deals for quarterbacks coming up. They, they did it with Bryce Young. They did it with C.J. Stroud. There's rumors that they've also done it for next year's class that's coming. And now they just signed a 16-year-old basketball star to a Fanatics Trading Cards autograph deal. Speaking of Neil deals, Marvin Harrison Jr., the standout wide receiver at Ohio State, of course, his dad, the Hall of Famer Colts wide receiver that Peyton Manning threw about a zillion touchdowns to. Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison were really the guys that, that Peyton Manning probably threw the most passes to in his entire career. His son now at Ohio State, a junior, was thinking about going to the NFL, which makes complete sense, and then was offered 20 to $25 million is what was reported for a nil deal to come back for his senior year at Ohio State. And so it looks like I think he is going to stay at Ohio State. A lot of these guys are going to be multimillionaires before they ever get to the pros, which is something that is very different than what we've seen going back. There's going to be some people that are for this, some people that are against this. There's kind of a ripple effect probably. Look, these, these guys are young, so you're handing them a, a ton of money. Some of them are probably going to do amazingly well, and some of them are probably going to be like, what's my motivation? I've got tens of millions of dollars. I'm 18 years old. I mean, and honestly, this is not a judgment. I really can't blame them. If someone handed me tens of millions of dollars when I was 18, probably wouldn't have had a 10, 15, 20 year NFL career or NBA career. That's just a hell of a lot of money. It's life changing money. And so I'm really interested to see how this changes kind of that paradigm with young athletes it was, uh, I can't remember who the star is, the women's basketball player for LSU. This is kind of an issue that's been going on with her as well. They won the national championship last year. She's made millions, couple million dollars in nil deals as a female athlete. Female athletes have not historically made millions of dollars, even at the pro level, let alone at the college level in this in these sorts of nil deals. There's questions around, is she still motivated? The LSU coach is like, ah, I just don't know what, you know, if she's got, I think it's Reese. Reese is the player, the, the women's basketball player. But Again, can you really blame these kids? I'm not making excuses for them, but it's just, it's a completely different deal than what we've seen in college sports and now looking looking into high school sports where some of these guys are gonna be making some serious dough. But you're probably thinking, what about trading cards? Well, this is something that's changed too. In the last 12 to 18 months, you've seen more of a rise in these kind of unlicensed or you know college player autographs. Caleb Williams has got autograph cards. I think it's SCV Sports Cards on YouTube, and he does a lot of this with Leaf products or with uh, First Bowman type stuff. And there is going to be more of an emphasis on these guys. Arch Manning, you know, has got auto cards. He hasn't even played any meaningful college football yet. There's some huge money being thrown around for Arch Manning autographs. So I think if you're talking about football card flipping, there's always such an emphasis on, okay, who's the, the new that new draft class that's coming out, the quarterback class, and then of course the prisms and the national treasures or tops chrome or whatever it's gonna be. But now I think you're looking at really a one to three year window for a lot of these college cards. And I know people are like, oh, but once they get their pro unis, all this stuff will be worth nothing. 
Yeah, but they're signing them at you know 18, 19 years old. They might have one to three years before they ever have an NFL card with an NFL jersey on it. So you're talking years where all they've got is this college autograph card. I think these cards are going to become more and more popular. There's going to be a rise in prices on these, and, and it's already been proven. There's already been people that are speculating that are paying big money for these types of cards. So that's kind of a fun little twist on football cards. You'll probably see it across all major sports. Oh, the other big glaring news, of course, is Otani is now an L.A. Dodger. A lot of people were speculating that he was going to go to the Dodgers. You got Juan Soto that just went to the, the Yankees. And so there's a lot of big players that, that are moving around here. Will Mike Trout get dealt or whatever? Will there be a change there with Mike Trout? For Otani and for the Dodgers, obviously for Otani, this makes a ton of sense. He's getting paid $700 million over 10 years. That is absolutely insane. But I was thinking about it because a lot of people have been like, this is so stupid for the Dodgers to spend this sort of money, especially when this guy probably is no longer an elite pitcher. He's probably just a power hitter and maybe he pitches, but there's a lot of speculation that you know, he's no, he's never going to be that, that guy that he was previously. But if you're looking at it from an ownership standpoint, Otani's in kind of a unique position because he is popular globally. Of course, he's got a lot of Japanese fans, but just Asia in general. He is a global superstar, and they're going to sell an absolute truckload of Otani Dodgers apparel and then ticket prices and everything else. I mean, the Dodgers, yes, they're putting out huge money. I'm not going to pretend like it's a great deal for them, but also it just kind of makes sense. Otani being that generational player, he is kind of that main guy that people are looking to to really be the face of MLB, and that's why they're spending this kind of money. It's kind of like the cream really rises to the top, and they're probably thinking, hell, if we lose everybody else on the roster, but we've got a guy like Otani, who's a generational player, face of the league, great. we're happy he's a Dodger. You know, so this sort of thing makes a lot of sense to me. And again, I think that there's just a lot of money to be made in ticket sales, TV broadcasting, apparel. Otani's going to be splashed over everything. There, he is, he's one of those guys that he's going to be the face of the league, and that's why they invested in him. So uh, good, on, good on the MLB and Otani, because I think a lot of people, too, they want to see a player of this caliber to be playing for a contender, and he is now. So I think it's a win for the MLB and for baseball fans. Went to my local show, the Raleigh Card Show yesterday. Had a blast. Took my eight-year-old. We always go. He's my he's my card show guy. He comes with me and we we take a look at cards. Been a big Pokemon card collector over the last couple of years. Starting at about age six. Now, like I said, he's eight. He's, he's going into age nine. And then over the last few weeks, something clicked with him. And now he is a mega Saints fan. Probably has nothing to do with his dad, right? But he just got way into football. Not even just the Saints, but he's just so locked in. He always gets locked in on one particular thing. And he's completely locked in on NFL football right now. Even this morning, like he was like, hey, dad, the National Football League. Like he's doing like the broadcasting thing that they do. I'm like, okay, okay, you're acting crazy. But he is all in now. Now he was looking at the card show instead of Pokemon. It was all about football cards, and then he also likes pop culture stuff. He's big into Ghostbusters right now. So we walk by a table, and there is a Ghostbusters card from the 80s, SGC-graded uh, Ghostbusters card. Slimer is on it, and he was, like, looking at it. Uh, Dad, hey, check this out. You know, that's such a cool card. And the dealer just hands it to him. Here, you want this? Here you go. It was $35 price tag on it. He just handed it to him, and his face was just like, Whoa, oh my gosh. And I was like, oh man, th thank you so much. Let's see what, what you got here. I've got to make a purchase. And the dealer was just like, hey, you know, it's, it's not really about that. You know, I mean, you don't have to make a purchase. I ended up buying a Jaws card uh, from that dealer. Um, but the one thing that kind of struck me too, because I think that when we're talking about dealers at shows, and I can't speak for every show across the country, and I'm not going to pretend like money is not a big focus. Of course, you know, you're spending your time out there. And for some people, they're making a living doing this. But I, I think sometimes we underestimate how many guys, gals go out on the weekend just as something to do. It's a fairly inexpensive way, you know, to go out and have, you know, a couple of days, a weekend to where you're hanging out with like-minded people. And especially at my rally card show, it's not expensive to get a table. It's tough, actually. They've got a wait list and stuff, but the actual cost of the table, it might be $100, $150 to go set up Saturday, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. And a lot of these guys are just okay if they break even. Maybe they make a few bucks, but if they break even, then they had fun that weekend. You know, so, and I think we really kind of underestimate, we, we look at the national, we look at a lot of these 
big time, you know, card show dealers that, you know, doing a lot of volume, you know, the Ryan Card Collector 2s and that sort of thing where they're they're making a, you know, a living off of it. There's a lot of a lot of folks that are dealers that this is kind of just a, a side. It's a it's a hobby in itself. Being a dealer at a card show is just part of the hobby. It's not to go and make thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars at the show. Now, of course, stakes get higher as you're spending more. Maybe if you're going to Dallas, if you're going to the National, you're spending big money. You've got some expectations like, hey, I need to make some back. It just has to make sense. That's fair enough. But my local Raleigh show, I think, is fantastic in that, you know, there's just a lot of people out there that just want to hang out and talk, have a conversation and, you know, just show some of the cards they've got and then move some cards. And it's just a fun weekend for them. So big thanks uh, to that dealer. I'll put his I'll put the, po the Instagram post up. Uh, so you could see his handle, but he he was great to deal with. And I think too, just as we kind of round out 2023, it makes me really pause, especially I've mentioned this this year, we've lost family members. It makes you just pause. And I, I want to make sure that, that if I'm lucky enough to be an 80, 85, 90 year old person, that when I look back, I'm smiling and not regretting, you know, because I think it can go either way. You know, there's a lot of people that are, you know, they're old and they're fairly bitter, for, for a variety of different reasons. Life didn't work out the way that they wanted it to, or they just made this choice or that choice, you know, and it, and it didn't work out the way they wanted. And I think that that's just a big kind of something that's hitting me in the face as I'm rounding out, you know, I'm in my early forties as I'm kind of like aging, I'm feeling myself aging and I'm thinking, you know what, today is tomorrow's nostalgia. You know, I've got to make today count. You know, these great times that we're having today in 10 years, I want to look back and be like, damn, that was a really great time. While I'm still having a good time 10 years from now. And then when I'm 80, I look back and be and I can just be like, damn, you know, this was this was great. You know, so I'm just thankful to everybody. Thank you for everyone that watches the channel. We crossed over 20,000 subscribers. Big thanks to Jeff Wilson really for helping me kind of get over the hump there on the holiday virtual show that I was a part of here a few days back. Um, but just thankful for all the people I've met this year, whether it be other content creators, viewers, dealers, you know, whoever you are in the hobby, it's been just awesome. And so we continue on. Now we just need my saints to pull out some sort of a miracle win out. And then of course their miraculous trek to the Super Bowl and we can really end the, end the football season right. All right, guys, that's all I've got today. Stay healthy, stay awesome. And I will talk to you again later.